Bro, listen. Never in my life associated the word boring with baseball. We know, we know what's up. Me? Yeah. Famous? Yeah. And I'm like giddy over there smiling like, holy, I mean, we're about to win this shit. Did everyone give you crap? Give me a good like host story. You know, I'm like, I'm not picking it up. No, we both love the game. We, we talk about it every day. Can't get off baseball. Having some popcorn, you're fooling around your phone. I'd have to weigh a mine for three hours. Like, but hang on, because it's about to be a wild ride. When I say there's no human being I'd rather be talking to right now, I mean it when I say there's no human being I'd rather be talking to than John Gibbons. Gibby. It may be a human being, but a, a, a few ball players you'd probably rather No, be no, talking. no. Humans. <laughs> humans. I'll are you be, that, Robbie, are you that bored? I, I am. No, I'm excited. You're, you're, excited. Like, I see you, my adrenaline like jumps through the roof. <laughs> It's like it's like it's like the movie Teletubbies. Oh boy! Nights. They throw cougar in the car. And he's yelling, "Lower your heart rate, Ricky Bobby." <laughs> you know, it's like, uh, but, I mean, but here's, here we, we're sitting here at Citizens Bank Park, and and holy mackerel, what a difference a year makes for for John Gibbons. You right? know, yeah, you know, Rob, yeah, yeah. The um, a year ago, right now, I was doing a podcast. Excellent podcast, uh, by the way. Yeah, I mean, I enjoyed it. I think yeah. it did okay. Yeah. And, uh, you know, of course, I'd been out of the game since 2018. So, um, yeah, how, you know, how I ended up being here right on this, on this day is, uh, is a pretty cool story. And it's been, a, it's been a wild year. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you how. Excellence. Excellent. That's how you got here. So yeah, You keep tricking them. Well, you know, first of all, I, when was the last time you had like a, a post game celebration? When was the last time you got? You've been through them before, obviously. You know, it's like ride, riding a bike. You probably never forget how to do it. Well, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if I've had been that many of them. Right. But you're right. <laughs> yeah, you know, Rob. The last one I was in 2016 up there in Toronto. And you know, we won the wild card game when, when it was just a one game. We beat Baltimore. Then we swept Texas, and then we got knocked out by Cleveland. Um, but I go back, you know, to I was originally a New York Met, got drafted by these guys in 1980, spent about a year and a half with them, but was there in 16 when they, um, I, you know, I hate to remind anybody, we knocked off them Reds or, or oh, yeah, yeah. snatched snatch victory or defeat yeah. that Jaws of Victory, whatever it was. So I can remember, remember back then doing it for the first time at this level, you know, so you're right it never it never gets old you never forget how to do it but it's uh, you, you have to you have to enjoy it because there's uh to be honest i never thought i'd be back here like this right and so that's what we're talking about you know when you, when you get those opportunities you better save it savor it and you know never never take anything for granted in this business well it's one thing to it's great that you came back it's great that you had that ride but and then you have the, basically the last week has been nuts like, you know, I, I talked to you probably a month ago, and it was, it's been a nice ride, it was a nice season, whatever. But then you have the last week. I mean, I don't know if you've been through anything like that where you double header, you know, go to Milwaukee, all that stuff. I mean, is it still just a blur for you or? Yeah, Rob, yeah, it is, you know, especially you get older, man, you know, it's like the, the travel and everything's a little tougher, but you know, you're right, it, it, was, it was a few months ago you know, the talk of our team was who who, who they're going to trade and sell off at the uh, trade deadline, right? Yeah. And uh, even the owner came, come out was talking about that. But I tell you what, I got to tip my hat to our manager Mendoza. Mendy, he uh, he, he hung in there and he he was stayed steady. And uh, you know, we got through that rough patch. And then, you know, I think it's since beginning of June we've had the best record in baseball yeah. or close to it. Um, but you know, we we always thought we had I mean a good team. You know, because there's a lot of talent on this team. It was just a matter of everything coming together, you know. And, um, you know, they uh, two years ago, this team, the basic core, won over 100 games. Last year, for whatever reason, you know, everything went south. So we knew there was some good players on here. And then, you know, everything just came together. I tell you, I got it. You know, an old Red Sox, Iglesias. Yeah, man. Did, did a heck of a job for us. And I think, you know what, he helped unite us. I really did. You know, he was play, obviously played great ball. It wouldn't have mattered, right? But he united us in the, you know, these, next thing you know, he's singing songs out there on the field. And it's been, it's, been, it's been a wild ride. But, you know, there's a feeling around here. You know, you don't always get it. Um, you know, when I can remember back playing all those Red Sox teams that you were involved with. It, you know, it was always a, a different feel about it, right? Yeah. It was, it was more than just a, a, 
uh, a great talented team. You know, there was always something that they were they were tight. There was something you're gonna figure out how to win. Yeah, I mean, like it's it's how you guys feel. Them, you know? Yeah. But then um, you go back to what you were just talking about, being in Atlanta and winning that game after coughing up a lead. And then the other night, going down to the final inning against one of the best closers in baseball. There's something happening here, you know? You know, we'll see if it carries over. But if, if anything, what it's done is, is given our guys a lot of confidence, you know? Um, and that's huge this time of year. You talk about Mendoza. We all learn from everybody. He's learned from you. What have you learned from him? Like, what have, as you've seen a lot of managers, and every manager is different, and every group of players is different. What is the thing that you learned from him? Well, you know, I couldn't be more impressed for a guy that's doing his, his first managing gig in New York City, right? Where you get, you know, it's like, it's like Boston. Boston, New York are the t- toughest places, right? You get scrutinized in everything you do, you know? And it's almost like, you know, you can't do anything right unless you win, you know? Be a better win, otherwise, yeah, you're, yeah, you're yeah. not doing anything right. So I've been impressed how he's, he stayed steady. You know, he, you know, he cut his teeth over in the, in, the, in the Bronx with the Yankees as a bench coach, so he, he was well aware of what, what this is all about. But, but the, you know, it really starts with kind of, what kind of individual he is. You know, he's, he's a man's man. You know, he's a good dude, cares about, you know, the players, the coaching staff, and their families. All, you know, he's got his priorities in order. And then he's just a good baseball mind, and he's, he's smart enough to understand that, you know, there's a balance in this game. You know, he's... He, uh, he understands all the analytic side of it and those kind of things, but yet he also understands that those guys out there are performing. Which is the biggest balance any manager can have in this day and age, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and, and you know what? I think some are afraid to do it. Yeah. You know, um, and, uh, but you know, he, he, he uh, it was just a matter of time before, before he got one of these jobs. You know, he interviewed a few times and, uh, uh, you know, and how we got together is, you know, a couple guys recommended me to him and uh, we hit it off. Yeah, so I'm fortunate to be here, but you know, um, you know, he's a, he's a friend now. It's not just a, you know, I'm, I'm cool. working for him, and, and um, I couldn't be more impressed. You know, and uh, he does he deserves great success, and, and I, I, he's going to be at this a long time. You know, you mentioned balance in the analytics and and just, just eye test, right? Um, this is what the playoffs are all about. This is the real test of having the feel, especially when it comes to leaving in the pitcher. I think Quintana. But he went pretty deep in the game the other day. You know, a lot of times they're saying, oh, we, we've seen it, right? Yeah. Guys get pulled off to four. You've been through managing in the postseason. You've watched managers in the postseason. It is the ultimate, like, you have to you have to go with your gut more than anything. And you can't be just, this is what the numbers say. I, I mean, I'm, I don't, I, I know that that's probably how you feel, but it's not the reality for some. No, you know, and, I mean, you see, you see so many different examples of it. It's not easy, you know, managing a team in, in the postseason because because all the eyes are on you around yeah. the world, you know, including uh, the front office eyes, by the yeah, way. Oh yeah, oh yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, um, you know, I even said another ex Red Sox. I heard I was listening to him the other day, Millar, and he was talking about the postseason. Yeah, you trust what you see because. It's totally different than the regular season, right? And some guys rise to the occasion in these games, and some don't. You know, it's just human nature. So when a guy's on, there's, there's probably a reason for it. You know, he's got some special going on with him that night. And, you know, even you go back, you know, there's a lot of mistakes made, and uh, you know, you can go back to the, the Pedro Martinez. You know, when uh, yeah, you know, Brady little, left yeah, him in there. Yeah. You know, obviously that was a little bit long, but. Then you then you go back to Tampa and Dodgers. Then Blake get, Snell, yeah, 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 when he wasn't he wasn't left in there long enough. Yeah, people yeah. think you know, and, and uh, so you see it all. You know, uh, one thing you know, if things work out, they can never criticize you. When they don't work out, you know, they they come at you hard. So that's the beauty of baseball, though. But back to Mendoza, man, he's confident in what he does. You know, which is, which is big, and. Um, so if he makes a decision and, and it backfires, which happens all the time in this game to everybody, you know he he, he you know he, instead of beating himself up, he understands. You know, hey, there was a good reasoning behind that move. And sometimes, you know, sometimes your best moves backfire, and your worst moves you come out smelling like a rose, man. That's just the way it is. Before I get to sort of that, the last game, Milwaukee. Like for you, when you managed in the postseason, when you first started doing it, you're like, was did it feel different? Like you said, because everything is watched so much. And, and you do have to maybe approach it a little bit differently. Yeah, well, yeah, you know what? Uh, when you come down to those games, you know that uh, it's, it's either win or get home. I mean, go home, right? Um, 
You know, but I will say this from the, my two years of, in Toronto doing it. You know, there's certain guys you lean on. There's certain guys, uh, you know, you are big game players. <laughs> right. That's just that's just the way it is. You, you can see it almost see it in their eyes. You know, a lot of times those are guys that have been around a little bit and they've got a, they've got experience. But um, you know, uh, the great George King. You know, the, the writer with the he wrote for the Phillies here yeah. and in the Yankees. And all, he sent me a text the other day after we won a game. The, Clinch, he said, "Hey, see, good things happen when you get out of the way." And I said, <laughs> "I said, George, you're 100 percent right." You know, so and uh, sometimes that's the best thing you can do. But that's not, but that's again, like that's not how baseball is now. It's not going to, you know, it's not getting out of the way. It's like we have to. In, science suggests that we have to do this. Right. Well, yeah, but, but you, you know, another example we talked about the, you know, the Pedro Martinez thing. You go back to the the my old team, the Blue Jays, last year. Elimination game. Oh, in Minnesota. Minnesota. Yeah. You know they had it scripted out. I mean, you can't do that in baseball. Come no. on, you got to you got to be you're absolutely crazy to think you can do that. And you know, obviously it didn't work, and um, there was a firestorm. And you know, hopefully people learn a little bit from that. You know, probably not because you know there's, there's a lot of people out there that's tough convincing, right? But um, I guess baseball baseball is going to show you the good and bad. Uh, all, all your decisions. But you know what, what you're saying is that the Mets, this Mets team seems like it's built on two things, which it can't really be quantified, which is a manager who has a really good feel and a bench coach who has a very good feel and also clubhouse. I like a really, really good clubhouse. A really good clubhouse dynamic. I mean, again, you don't you can't put numbers on those things. But as we get here this deep in the, into October, Seems like pretty important stuff. Yeah, you know, but you do. You, you'll see different things. Like this group, we, I mean, it's a great group of guys right here, right? They all get along for the most part. There's really no nut jobs in there. You know, when I was going back when I was in Toronto, you know, we had some um, we had some loose cannons, guys, emotional guys that uh, weren't necessarily well liked around baseball, but they were other than that, they were really good players, yeah. right? And then I spent time with the '86 Met team. Where they would fight each other all the time, but then when the game time, they were out there. That, you know, they fight the other team. You know, they all came together and played. You know, to win that night. So there's always there's always something different going on in different clubhouses. You could be successful with different types, but it sure makes it a heck of a lot easier for manager and the coaching staff when they all get along. Oh, oh, it's um. So going into that last inning in Milwaukee, as you go into the last inning, now we can. You, you, Tell me, like the the true, true feeling about how you felt. Was it was there like, oh man, this is a nice run. We're running on fumes. It is what it is. Or was it? Did you really feel like, okay, this, we still have a chance here? Well, you know what? Well, you know, when you, we, we saw their closer come in, it was one of the best in baseball. Um, uh, you, you know, it, it was going to be tough, right? You know, but we, we, it was still, you know, two run game. And I think the key was, you know, uh, we had Lindor coming up, right? You know, and at the time, I think he, we had two hits, and he had both of them. So you knew there's a good chance if anybody's going to get on, it's him, right? If he gets on, now we got tie and run comes to plate, and we 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 have uh, we we have him, then we and um, the Nimmo's coming third, and then, then Alonzo, the the three core guys of this team, right? Mm. So this, this this is our best shot, right? But you also knew what you're up against, you know, and momentum was was definitely in their favor and the crowd was into it but the, but i still had i was calm you know but yeah. I, uh knew, i knew we had a chance but I, I didn't think it was a great chance yeah right? but when Lind lindor got on you know what you know we were, you know i think he's the mvp you know because he's an everyday player and he's been he's had that kind of year and i've watched it over and over when he comes to the play he usually does something good and when he gets on base Good things happen, man. They happen all the time. That's it. You know how you beat us? You keep him off the bases. Yeah. If he gets on the base, you know, he does some, you know, you, we're a really, really tough team to beat. And sure enough, he gets on, and then one thing led to another. And Pete, you know, uh, Pete Alonzo was, you know, he's been, he, he been scuffed a little bit. He's been putting a little pressure on himself because, you know, it's free agent year, all this thing, and a lot of expectations. But but you knew that, you know, it's, as, as, as much success and how many home runs he's hit in his lifetime here, you knew some. You know, you, you knew one swing of the bat. I mean, it's not, it's not, it's not a big deal for him to hit a home run, right? So if he, if he, if he happened to catch one right, you know, we got the lead. Um, sure enough, he did it in perfect timing. And I think, you know, that um, 
that home run right there because he'd been pressing. There's no question. He's a human being. You know, he'll probably maybe he can exhale now and he might go on a serious deal yeah. here. You know, so. Um, but so to go back without um, a lot of him and Han, yeah, I knew our chances weren't good, but you know what? Uh, this team's got that mojo going, you know, and, uh, and when that happens, anything can happen. You gave me the give me reaction. What was that? But the camera wasn't on you. No, you know, you know what happened? Our, our hitting coach, Jeremy Barnes, was standing next to me, and he hit it. He's in my ear. He goes, did he get enough? I'm saying, my, I'm thinking my eyesight ain't that good. I can't, I can't tell you, you know. And then, then I, then, then, uh, then I heard the roar. I, I kind of see. I saw the, the uh, outfielder jump, and then you could see the little. He didn't, didn't come down with it. You know, you can always tell when they got yeah. a shot. And then with the, the roar, I knew he got it. So uh, maybe I need glasses, but maybe uh, maybe I didn't want to watch either. <laughs> that's, that's true. But by, by the way, another thing, and, and the scouting reports are so huge. Like it's like I, you have all these stories about things that happen. I was talking to um, Hosmer. We had Hosmer on the other day when he raced home on a ground ball to Lucas. Get some Mets, right? And because he had the scouting report on Duda, like not being able to throw home, and so big, big thing. Um, there was some like talk about like when it came to Devin Williams to have something, and I'll give you another one. Ortiz's grand slam against Detroit, like they had Joaquin Benoit's changeup, right? So they had that. Like, and, but the postseason is always that stuff. It's well, yeah, that kid. And, and, and you know, usually since tight contest, you got your, your your best players, your best teams, obviously, are in it. So that if you if you can find an, an edge, even, even that same year you're talking about, uh, Kansas City knocked knocked us out, right? Yeah. David Price, second game of the, the playoffs, you know, he was rolling. Except he's going to the seventh inning, I think he gave him one hit, you know. We were leading two nothing. And then uh, I think then they figured out then like he was I think it was the, when he was gonna throw his change up, he took two two deep breaths or something. You know, because you know, Dave's always breathing, right? Yeah. But then but then that that's the word I got. And then they then they you know came to life and, and uh, ended up beating us there and then when they went on and um, of course beat beat the Mets. Uh, yeah, there's all, it, that's amazing. That's yeah, amazing. Something yeah. a little small. Just, that. A, just, a, just a little. Even in, in that game, also in that series, Batista, our right fielder. You know, uh, Kansas City's actually a bigger par- ballpark than the one we played in at home. But Batista was a good right fielder, and a lot of times that ball down the right field line, he'd go into that corner and throw to second base and had some, a lot of success with it, right? So that was kind of his natural play when, when this guy always when a guy on first base, you know, you're always supposed to. Or nine out of ten times you're supposed to line up yeah. at home and then then adjust off of that. So he came up, you know, didn't get to the wall. But the third base coach, uh, Jersley, buddy of mine, we even talked about it. You know, good scouting reports say, hey, Batista will come up and throw the second a lot. And so they, uh, who was running? Was it Kane? Maybe Lorenzo, Lorenzo Kane was coming. This was this was a tie game late in the game, yeah. elimination game. Ozzy comes up, throwing the second baseman. Jersley, third base coach, kept wheeling. And of course, they played the style of the game, and they, they busted their butts, and they got a lot of guys that were some speed. Yeah. Wheeled them all the way, and they took the lead, and then they ended up, um, you know, beating us an inning later. So, so yeah, those scouting reports do matter. You know, yeah. um, you know, you get to this point, you're not necessarily going to overpower anybody. Yeah. You might. Sometimes you do. Sometimes you get that pitching performance where you know they have no chance. <laughs> um, but yeah, every little every little thing helps. That's so the last thing is my favorite. What our, both of our favorite like lines, the Frank Howard line you had. You know, how many cannons do you have, right? Yes. Right. It's so it's it's about how many cannons you have. That's right. You can. Hey, you know what, Robbie? You you can have the best scatter report in the world, but like you said, if 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 you if you don't have much talent, it's not going to matter. So, Philadelphia has a lot of cannons. Yeah. No question about it. But conversely, I think that you guys have maybe a lot of cannons that aren't as paid as much, but still have proven themselves to be pretty powerful cannons. Yeah, yeah, we did. We, yeah, we've got a good line. I mean, you know what? This year we played these guys pretty tough. You know, I think it's pretty pretty even. They might have one more win, but you know they, um, you know, they're a free swinging team. In our in uh, in all our real strengths are starting pitchers, right? We got we got some guys that uh, can equalize you a little bit, and they use generally pitch deeper into the game. Um, so maybe it's, a, it's different what it says on paper, but what's actually happening. But, but my, my eyes were talking, tell me, 
you know, uh, our guys have shut down their big boys, you know, pretty good. It's not a good example because you just said you can't see. It's, yeah, there you go. Exactly. <laughs> I'm joking. Go, go ahead. But you're, no, you're right. But you're, but you're right. Yeah, you're yeah. right. No, I think I think there, there's something to that. Yeah, yeah. The, yeah. You know, where we we were just playing Milwaukee, and they had a lot of guys that contact guys, and they shoot the ball around. Where these guys, you know, uh, especially in this ballpark they're playing, they're looking to hit home runs. You know, and uh, of course we go back to that game Milwaukee, and all over baseball, home runs do win. You know, so, yeah. but. You know, we, we match up pretty good with our um, rotation, I think. Uh, and we should be able to hopefully equalize these guys, but then they're coming at you with some good starting pitching too. So, But I think it's, uh, you know, but it goes back to, uh, you know, we got some mojo going. Yeah. You know, and never underestimate that. No, that's the biggest cannon of all. Exactly. Uh, all right, thanks, man. Okay.